In today's episode, we are going to be changing the door hinges. Now, why are we doing this? Well, it's because these door hinges, these old door hinges that are original, they don't tend to hold the door up on an incline. So what I mean by that, the door would just naturally sort of close on its own, whereas on a, you might notice on newer cars, the door has, I guess, sections where it holds itself up. Now, in this particular case, there is parts from another Nissan that you can do a direct swap, thus uh, introducing those sections where the door can stop at certain points. And I'll show you what those look like in a moment. But basically, what we need to do today is pretty much remove this door card, get to that particular hinge to replace it. This is a very easy job, and I'll go through all the parts. Now, before I get into anything, I just wanted to say, if you can, please support the channel. Go and throw in a comment, go and hit the like button, and if you're not already subscribed, please do so, as I am looking at releasing plenty of content. I don't exactly know where I'm going with my YouTube channel yet, but I'm just releasing as much as I can, anything that I really enjoy making. Anyway, let's go into the actual parts list. If you do own an S15, hopefully this helps you out. Here is everything that you basically need for this upgrade. Now these are all genuine Nissan parts. Uh, these are not required, these are just clips. Every car, every second hand car really, always has missing clips because people break them. So we got some extra clips. Now, other than these, these are the main, main events. So here are the new hinges. You can see that they do now have grooves that basically offers that stop for the door on a, when the door is slightly inclined rather than how it just closes now. I believe these are from a Nissan Skyline. I'm not sure um, what one it is or which model, but they are a direct fit. You can see the part number there. Then we've got the nuts, the wing, uh, not wing nuts, sorry, the normal nuts for these threads. Then we've got the bolts that bolt into the top part here. And then lastly, we've got this plastic cover this is just to make it look nice. Um, it also comes with the mix. So what I'll do is, if you really wanna locate these part numbers and understand how much you need to order, I'm just going to look at the receipt now. I highly suggest you pause the video just so you can see what to order. Keeping in mind, these are ordered from Australia and the part numbers may differ in your country. Now also wanted to say that this may be the last video you see the S15. It is a bit sad. If I had some non-copyrighted sad music, I'd definitely play it. So at the end of this video, I'll give you a quick update on what's going on. These pry tools are going to help us from breaking clips and also help us from damaging the already fragile plastics. I want to stress that you need to take your time. These old cars, are very brittle with their plastics as I've learned along the way and then things are very hard to find to replace them. Lucky for me or unlucky for uh, for me and lucky at the same time a lot of these clips are missing from whoever took this door off last time hence why I had to order new clips so this should come off pretty easily. To get that out, it can't, it's unscrewed from out here, but it actually has to come out from being pulled into the car or into the door and to get it out through the speaker. So let's remove the speaker. All right. This is a 10 mil. To unscrew this part here. And here you go. That is the entire mechanism out. I'm just at this point just feeling for it. So whilst this is like this, I'm just gonna put the wing nuts on. The wing nuts, I keep calling them that. I'm gonna put the nuts on, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, before I tighten it completely, I'm gonna put everything back together. And I just wanna make sure that it works. The door closes properly, not that it wouldn't change much because the hinges, the physical 
hinges haven't been relocated, but before I tighten it completely, that's just what I want to do, making sure it's all good to go. So let's put this all back together. All right, that is done. Just checking the door. You can definitely feel it now. It's, it stops every section. So you can see, moving to the next section. So pretty much as a brand new car door. Easy fix, your door feels a bit more solid. It's not gonna close on you as easily anymore. Now, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to just tighten it all up now. There's no torque um, settings that I could find. So I'm just going to go by hand. Okay, that's it. Looks much better than the previous one. It's even got this little cover thing. So pretty cool stuff. These, uh, these nuts did not have thread lock on them. I don't think it's necessary because it's not physically holding the door. That's what the hinges are doing. But, you know, just make sure you don't over tighten them. And if you're really paranoid, you can put some thread locker on it so they don't come off. But even if they start getting loose, it's not gonna be a catastrophic event. It's, you know, something you could just re-tighten if you didn't tighten them enough. Because uh, these things you definitely, they don't want to thread them, especially the thread that goes into the car. You want to be careful with it. Now what's left to do is just rinse and repeat for the other side. I'm going to move the car to this side of the garage, just because I don't have the space on the other side. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the other door. I've just moved the car so I can start working on the passenger side door. This car overall, it's been awesome. It's a fantastic car to drive. It's mechanically sound and I've enjoyed every moment of, um, of owning it for the temporary time frame that there was. It's a shame to see it go. However, long term, it's not really something that I see myself owning. I do know that now and I definitely have some cars on my bucket list that I'd like to purchase for this channel uh, as projects maybe five ten years whatever that looks like for youtube um, thus i can try and put in some uh, modifications hopefully unseen to youtube so far but as we know almost everything has been on youtube has been done already it's just more or less um, if i can get to that point i'd love to get some cars uh, and do some projects and build up my experience that would be the uh, the goal Either way, um, I've got to send this car off. So I'm going to just finish that side. It was, I'm going to speed run through it. You've already seen everything being done on this side. So it's pretty much rinse and repeat. And then off we go. So that is basically it. Very easy modification if you want to do on your own S15. Now, wanted to quickly talk about what's going on. I mentioned at the start of the video that this may be the last time this S15 comes to this garage. And that is because the owner is taking back their car and they're going to be completing some work. So it may not find its way back here to be stored as they may have other, um, other arrangements for it. So that pretty much leaves us with the Megan and the Chivic. But um, the Megan right now is out of order. And the reason being is because instead of a rear main seal that I thought it may have had in the previous video that I did the service on, it's actually better. It's better than that. I've got a uh, axle shaft seal leak, which is better than a rear main seal because I can replace that with ease. And then there is so much to do on the Civic and I just have not got around to it. So it just it's just a matter of now that this car, the S15 will be out of my hands, I've got more space to work with the Civic to effectively 
fix all the interior, all the little bits and pieces that I wanted to fix. Um, but either way, that is the end of this video. Like I said at the start, help me out if you liked it and leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already. But either way, see you in the next one.